This hide and hook boat tip is brought to you by Hide and Hook Taxidermy, where all the big bucks go when they die. Aerodynamics arrow shafts, tougher by design. Grim Reaper broadheads, watch them drop. And the legendary Quickie Quiver, the legend continues. Hey everybody, got another quick tip for you. This time I'm going to show you how to tie the dreaded D loop. For this, all you're going to need is a pair of scissors, a lighter, and a, about a four inch piece of D loop material. You can pick it up at any archery shop. Okay, got a new string on this bow. I just put it on for one of my customers. What you got here is you got about a four inch piece of your D loop material, which is this happens to be a camouflage braided type and I've cut it off on each end and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn the little bulb that goes on to hold it from slipping through the knot once it's tied. So what you do is you heat this up. You don't want to burn it. See that's, that catches on fire and it crystallizes the plastic and what ends up happening is, is uh, it'll break. It keeps wanting to catch on fire. You just have to make sure that it doesn't burn for long enough to damage the material because it'll get crunchy and it'll just pull right off. They actually make a tool that you can use to burn these, um, but I don't have one. <laughs> All right, now that we got one side burned with a little knot on there, what I like to do, this is just a trick that I do. It's not recommended and it's not a rule or anything, but I like to wax this string, this material here. And the reason I like to do that is I think that it'll make a more secure knot, and I just rub it on there till it's till it's really good and coated on it, nice and sticky. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the whole thing because I don't know how much I'm gonna cut off, and I want to be sure that I have plenty on there. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to set it the uh, D loop up with a fob. You can do this with any arrow. But the fobs need to be level. When you set a fob up, they should be level and square on the bow. You don't want to have them a little knock high. You do that with your fletchings. But the first thing you do is we've got this nice and level. As you take the end that you burnt and you put the little knob on there, the little bulb that comes up when you when you burn it. Take your loop material. You're going to wrap it around your bowstring like so. Above your knock. I like to set the top first. That way I can take the arrow off and get it out of my way to do the bottom. Okay? What you do is, is you come around the string like so, you make it cross over, then you go over the top of the bit long piece of the string. Then you come back around the bowstring again, the way opposite way you came through the first time, and you pull your little knot bulb on the end that you burnt straight through that little hole there. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to open this up a little bit so you can see exactly what that thing is going to look like. You see it, it's opened up like that. And then there's the other side of it. You get an idea of the curly knot. This is called a cinch knot is the name of this knot because it cinches itself once it's got pressure put on it. Okay, then you slide this down to the top of your knock and then you want to pull it. And you'll see it. As I pull this, it's going to cinch right around itself. It's kind of like a snake, you know. It wants to choke that string. And you pull that nice and tight, okay? got that locked down, then you can remove your arrow because your top knock point is set. I'll move that over here out of the way. Alright, then for the bottom loop, what you want to do is you go around the string. Once again, you want to come back over the top through the D part of that loop. See, it's going to be through the D. You go through here, okay? Then you're going to go down around that same piece of material, which is your, your D-loop material. You're going to go down around it, back towards the way you had just come around, and then go back around the bowstring and through that big loop. That's pretty good right there. Okay? And what I do is, is I like to pull this tight and slide the D-loop to make that loop short as I, as, I, as I like. I like a short loop myself. They tend to stretch as time goes by, which ends up altering your anchor point. You just have to change these things twice a year, okay? Now that D, that loop's real nice and short. And then you just take your pair of scissors and you go ahead right here and cut it off 
close to your loop. All right, then you take it back apart, open it up, and pull it. I pull it away from the string because you don't want to burn and have this thing burn your bow string. This is brand new string, and I hate to burn it. What you do is you burn this this again, just so you can get a knot on it. You want to try not? I'm trying to get it on the camera without me getting burned, which may not work. Okay, we got your knob, your little bulb burned on the end of that. Let that cool a little bit so you don't knock it off of there before it dries. And then you just retie this. This is not, you could practice this knot real easy with a stick if you, if you, you know, or on an arrow shaft. That's a good, good straight thing to try. Practice it a few times before you do this. And uh, you'll be in good shape. But what I do there is I like to take my release What I do is I like to take my boat, my, my string release, and I like to put it on here, and I like to go ahead and pull this tight, like that. That way, you cinch the top and you cinch the bottom, okay? Then, what you want to do is reinstall the arrow, and if you have any problems with getting it on there, you can kind of wiggle this, and it'll open this up. Now. On your short arrow, on your short bows that have the short axle length, you end up having a pinching point right here on the fobs. And what happens is, is that string, as you draw it back, the string's going to come in and it's going to push your, your fob like so and make it pop off the string. Well, if you have that problem, what you need to do is you need to move this bottom knot down farther. Okay? Leave your top knot the same, but move that bottom knot down farther so that way, it ends up increasing this air angle back here. It, well, the angle probably stays the same, but it ends up moving it away when you're at full draw, away from the fob. That way, you're not going to push it off. So basically, that's how you set up to do with a fob. The regular arrow for fletching, you do it the same exact way as I told you how to tie it before. You just want to set your knock point high. This guy is going to be shooting uh, fletches. I use a raw shaft. I want to set this one eighth of an inch high so that way he'll have that perfect alignment when he shoots his fletches. Alright, well that's about as simple as I can put it by on how to tie a D loop. If you have any questions, be sure to drop me an email. Um, you probably never have to tie a D loop in your life, but if you're ever on a remote hunting trip somewhere where you're, there's no bow shops around, knowing how to do this could save your hunt. And I think knowledge is power, and I hope I just gave you some power. Thanks, and I'll see you in the woods, but you won't see me. <laughs>